Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Free Press Community Review's weekly video update. My name is John Kendall. I'm editor of the Free Press Community Review, and I'm joined today by Caitlin Stryland, who is normally uh, a reporter for the West edition of the Free Press Community Review, but because we have some people on vacation, uh, because it's summertime, uh, Caitlin has been filling in as a reporter for the East edition of the Free Press Community Review, getting her uh, out of her comfort zone and uh, into uh, a party, a part of the city, a party of the city, this was <laughs> some kind of Freudian slip there uh, <laughs> that uh, she ha doesn't necessarily write about. But uh, you actually live on the on the east side of the Red River, don't you, Caitlin? I, I used to. I grew I grew up in East Kildonan. Uh, yeah. I've I've since made the made the jump across the river uh, to the north end, but yeah, I lived in East Kelowna until I was about 20, 21. Okay. Very familiar. So with it. so you're very familiar with the area, and uh, let's talk about uh, a couple of the stories that you did um, for the August 10th issue of the East edition of the Free Press Community Review. Um, the first one you did is on Folklorama. Uh, it's Folklorama time once again. Um, 24 pavilions over two weeks, uh, first time since 2019 that uh, the various uh, multicultural community associations that run pavilions for Folklorama have actually been able to show off their wares in person. And uh, although it's closed this week, um, it did have a very successful run last week and you had an opportunity to go and visit the German pavilion. Tell me what it was like. Yeah, so it was uh, hosted on Dubuque in St. Boniface at the Holy Cross Gym. And previously, uh, the pavilion had been at the, the German Society, I think, on Selkirk Avenue yeah. in North End. Um, but they decided to make the jump to this gym for a couple of reasons. Like one, their audience was just getting bigger and bigger every year. They needed a space that could could pull, pull more people in. And also the new spaces, uh, wheelchair accessible, whereas I heard the uh, old location wasn't. Um, so yeah, just to make it easier for folks to get down there, get in to see the shows. And I believe I went down on a Tuesday or Wednesday evening and the first two shows of the evening were completely sold out. The neighborhood was just buzzing with people. There was buses of people being dropped off and everything. And yeah, it was it was fantastic. The, uh, the performances um, included people of all ages. There was like younger performers, performers all the way up into their 90s. So really every generation, they had a, a live band that had some kind of traditional, more German European instruments like the fugal, the fugal horn, which is um, essentially like a trumpet, but has a bit of a darker sound. So they had the mm -hmm. fugal horn. And yeah, while the music was going on, they were serving up uh, the tr traditional fare like schnitzel and spatzel, which I learned is kind of like an egg noodle. Um, so really, really heavy, hearty foods and uh, beers, beers to match. Although I didn't, I didn't sample any myself, but <laughs> the beers were flowing for sure. The I was going to say. Well, I was going to say that that, that I, uh, one of the reasons the pavilion probably had to move and is drawing so many people is the the German beer, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's what uh, what many people um, know about German culture, the whole uh, Oktoberfest uh, um, tradition, uh, particularly in the southern part of Germany and Bavaria. So um, that's fun to hear. Um, I'm I'm familiar with Holy Cross Gymnasium because uh, I grew up in North Saint Vitale, which uh, very near the the dividing line between Saint Saint Vitale and Saint Boniface and Holy Cross was just a few streets away. In fact, my local corner store was on Dubuque, a little further east from Holy Cross. So yeah, um, I can remember how the area used to buzz. Um, when the Scottish Pavilion was at the Heather Curling Club, which is on Newville, just down from um, from uh, Dubuque, and I remember uh, to the uh, the the blare of the bagpipes um, <laughs> that uh, used to come from the Heather Curling uh, parking lot three times a night for uh, for three shows, uh, as they the pipers always did a march through of uh, the Scottish Pavilion. Now, was there a, sort of an Umpa band uh, march through at the German Pavilion at the show, the show you saw? Um, I, 
guess there was, uh, I mean, the music polka was one of the main styles. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say there was quite any marching. There wasn't any marching okay. going on. It was more of a stationary show. Um, yeah. Okay. But uh, there were probably flugelhorns uh, being uh, tuned up in the parking lot outside Holy Cross Gym. Um, <laughs> that uh, let the neighbors know that shows were going on. And that's a polite way of putting it, yes. Um, I uh, live in the west end of the city and not far from Aaron. And uh, Aaron between um, St. Matthew's and Portage Avenue is home to the Scandinavian Center of Winnipeg and also the Irish Club of Winnipeg. And both the Irish Pavilion and the Scandinavian Pavilion were uh, running last week. And yeah, our uh, neighborhood was choked with cars. And uh, when when Liz, my partner, and I were out walking Lily the dog, uh, yeah, we noticed that the streets were teeming with people. So based on my eyewitness uh, uh, accounts and, and your uh, story, it sounds like folklore has been a big hit with people uh, upon its return. So really glad to hear that. Of course, there are 12 more pavilions. The, the way it works is they do 12 pavilions in the first weekend and then the second 12 pavilions in the second week. And the, the second week of 12 pavilions began this past Sunday, the 7th of August, and will continue through this Saturday, which will be the 13th. And uh, people can get the information about which are open and where they are in the city by visiting the Folklorama website. Uh, Folklorama.ca. So thanks for telling us about that. And uh, was that your first Folklorama experience? You must have been to some before. I've only been, that would have been my second. I think I went to in 2019, I guess. I think I went yeah. to the Chilean Pavilion. Okay. I believe it was the Chilean one. It was a blast. Was yeah, a good food and music there, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's that's the draw, good food and good music and, and getting the opportunity to see, um, you know, the traditional, um, hear the traditional sounds, taste the traditional food, get a sense of uh, the traditions of the various cultures that make up Winnipeg and Manitoba. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite festivals. You know, even if, as Melissa Martin, Free Press columnist, uh, wrote recently uh, really all we're doing is is sitting in a church basement on uh, folding chairs uh it's still an awful lot of fun um from there uh we'll move to uh, your old stomping grounds um east kildonan and and north kildonan and uh, you've got an interesting story about uh, a used bookstore whose owners have decided to uh, close down in a couple of weeks please tell me a little bit more about uh i love the name dog-eared books uh which is on henderson island yeah it's a fantastic name yeah for anyone who's not familiar uh the store it's kind of located next to where Marshall's music was. I know they've switched with a comic store. Yes, um, they have. Quite recently, but it's in that on that side of uh, Henderson Highway in that area. Um, this bookstore owned by Linda Durham and Annens has been there since 1999 in the original location. So 23, about 23 years now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess what I can say about this place is this duo have been running it together since 2008, uh, one of the owners um, has been there since the beginning. But for the last, like, I don't know, 10-ish, 10, 12 years, they've been running it as a pair. And the store started out as um, just kind of like a career change for, for one of the owners. And then the other one, uh, she started coming to the store and said, hey, I want to start a book, a used bookstore myself. And uh, the partner was like, hey, why don't you come on board? And they've really kind of been cornering the market for used books in that part of the city ever since. Um, they carry all different kinds of books and yeah, now now the pair have kind of just decided to take take that next step in their life and retire from the biz um, and have decided to close the shop along with them because they've been 
they've it's only ever been them, right? Um, so they're welcoming customers to come down uh, before August 24th, I believe, uh, just to kind of say their goodbyes and buy some cheap books. Every book's on sale for a dollar right now. They're trying to clear out. When I spoke to them last week, they still had 8,000 books in the shop, down from 18,000. So they're making a dent in it, but uh, still still ways to go. So um, essentially, they're uh, they're liquidating the, their stock and uh, in the... Uh, parlance of uh, uh, a North Winnipeg legend. They're uh, asking everyone to come on down, just like Nick Hill would say, yeah. <laughs> and, and help them liquidate the, their their stock of books. Um, it's, it's kind of sad to see it go in the sense that I love old bookstores and, you know, I just love the fact of, of that books are being uh, made available to be owned again for uh, prices at prices that are far less than than their original list prices uh, to people who might not otherwise be able to afford them and want to own them. So it, it's sad in that sense to see it go. Did you ever visit it when you were younger, uh, growing up in East Kelowna? Yeah, you know what? I still went to it. I I probably went to that store about six months ago. Um, really? Be once or twice a year. Uh, yeah, so I, I've been a customer of that store kind of on and off for the last 10 years almost. Okay. Well, it's one of my uh, retirement dreams, and I have many retirement dreams, and uh, I keep getting more of them as I get older, uh, Is was to own a, a, a bookshop. Uh, the idea of uh, being surrounded uh, by a bookshop that's you know not too terribly busy would uh, give me something to do, a place to go, and time to read and explore things that I want to uh, while I'm there. Um, maybe uh, I should talk to the women at Dog Eared Books, although I'm not quite ready to retire yet. Oh, well, maybe someone else will have that idea and take it over. Exactly. There was, unfortunately, another another used bookstore in East Coldona and kind of closer to Elmwood closed only about two months ago. It was right on the corner yeah. of uh, Hespler and Henderson. Yeah. Um, I, I've been there once a number of years ago, but... Uh, Maybe, I don't know, maybe it was a bit longer than a couple months ago, but now it's a board game, a board game um, yes. venue. Yeah, I That's recall. Cool. Okay. And we did a story about uh, the guy who started the board game shop, uh, oh. and he had started it as an online only business, and now it's a physical presence uh, for him. And board games seem to be incredibly popular, but that's another story for another time. And indeed, uh, I. I have a lead on a uh, a board game shop story for you when you're back on the west side next week. Uh, so uh, I'll send you an email about that one. Um, now, this is uh, the week of August 10th. Uh, what are you looking at for the following week, the week of August 17th? Yeah, so um, I won't get too much into detail on this right now, but I will be going back to Dubuque uh, for the African Pavilion which is going to be an absolute blast. I'm curious to see how they're going to incorporate so many so many nations into one event because yeah. I Google it, there's 54 countries in Africa, so yeah. it's going to be, be a jam-packed night, so I'm really excited for that one. Um, great, great venue. And then a story I'm really looking forward to writing. I've done part of the interviews already, but... Um, a University of Manitoba Bison's basketball, um, former basketball player, has started a business called Little Ballers. Um, okay. Basketball for uh, kids all the way up, to, all the way from pretty much babies to, I think, nine years old. Um, and it's, they've already, uh, they're currently taking registrations for September. Um, you can check out the story for kind of more details on where and when that'll be. Um, but the idea is to kind of give kids just like experience, like team, like working on a team, um, like hand-eye coordination, just skills that kind of really benefit them in a lot of different areas of their lives, just to give them that head start from a super, super young age. Um, so Sorry, I have a bit of light going on here. Yes, I was I was just <laughs> noticing that. And no worries. I was going to note while you were talking. Um, I was going to note after you finished that uh, um, the 
to tell viewers not to adjust their uh, their screens that uh, the light issues were from uh, streaming through your window. Um, but it was a really interesting effect. Uh, it was making you look almost angelic yes. uh, and perhaps even Mona Lisa like. Um, it was really, it's really kind of cool so uh but no we're we seem to have the glare off the screen now thanks for that and uh i look forward to uh reading the stories about the african pavilion and uh little ballers that's another great name i love the name yeah. of that program so very cool um thank you for this caitlin and uh before we go i just want to remind our our reader there's that little glare on the screen again i just want to remind our readers and viewers that um I will be going on vacation for two weeks myself, and so we won't be doing a weekly video update for the community review for a couple of weeks, uh, and we'll be back in the week of August 31st. So there will be none for the week of August 17th, nor one for the week of August 24th, as I'll be away for two weeks. So thanks for reading. Thanks for viewing. You can find these every Wednesday at 5 o'clock. Uh, posted to canstarnews.com and on our YouTube channel, which is simply Canstar Community News. All right, here's the glare again. And with that, uh, we'll watch you fade off into the distance. Thanks, Caitlin. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye.